Yeah, I was trying to think of a, a video to do something on a con on the conservative topic, and I couldn't really get going because I was like, well, I kind of have an idea of what I want to talk about, but I wasn't really able to. I was just kind of tired too, but I thought I would put together at least some rudimentary thoughts that maybe I can use this for a video later. The basic idea I was trying to communicate was that people who think of themselves as conservatives today are classical liberals. And the main obstacle for these people is that they won't accept that you have to use force against your enemies. That we have enemies? and that we have to use force against them and that politics is force and when I say force I don't necessarily mean brute force brute physical force although it does involve that at times but more importantly it means the whole scope of the word force in in that a, a cohesive people a unified people has an interest in self-preservation and it will prohibit uh, subversion from its streets from its culture and it will protect its young it will protect the youth physically and it will protect the youth from indoctrination with subversive ideas now some may protest that well this is you're just going to brainwash them with your religion instead well depends on how you use the word brainwash but you have to indoctrinate with your own values is if indoctrination is a, a neutral word I don't know it has a negative connotation to it but if you're not going to instill your culture in your children then the enemy is going to install or instill their culture in your children they will take your children from you so force has to be used now obviously we can think of more obvious uses of force like drug dealers and criminals need to be taken off of the streets and all the illegal immigrants and quite frankly many of the legal immigrants need to be deported and there's no way to do that without force the enemy is already using force against us these phenomena which are afflicting us the mass immigration the crime these are brought on by design by people that hate us by our enemies because we have enemies they know what they're doing they've been doing it for a long time we have these enemies and they're already using force against us that because that's the nature of politics power or force now the political process as it is right now is not very fruitful but I wouldn't say never vote but I'm very cynical about participating in the mainstream political process but you would certainly need to continue to participate politically so you should advocate for your views any means you have of bringing together like-minded people you should go for that I think church is the best way to do that but any other clubs organizations activities whether formal or informal should be pursued because they bring meaning to life and they bring and forge cohesive bonds chiefly between men but also forming communities and this is what we need because you need to have the cohesive you have to to use the force the force has to come from having a cohesive people if you don't have a cohesive people how can you use force because why would anyone sacrifice for something that has no meaning in this world right now Canada is just an economic zone we could revive something out of that but that's how it is right now so why would you sacrifice for a government that doesn't like you that doesn't represent you that d detests you if you are conservative if you're white if you're Christian any of these traditional characteristics then you're the enemy of the regime of the left the global American Empire of the media of the of the institutions almost all the institutions are all controlled by that force the left they control all of it and the fake right is part of the left they're the outer party it's all the same people but many people are stuck in classical liberalism and that has them think that well uh, we can just explain to the left why they're wrong and they'll listen to us and then we'll win the argument 
and uh, our facts you know cancel your feelings whereas in reality the nature of politics especially mass politics is that feelings don't care about your facts feelings always overrule facts because this is this basic understanding of the masses of psychology and of how you don't have to be a psychologist to realize I mean it's one of the things that would make you a Christian to be honest because you would just see how sinful humans are including ourselves myself included but but you would see how like like I'm not a truther and I don't fall into that sort of trutherism where you know you go down a million rabbit holes and you reject everything because th that leads to insanity but just in the beginning stages of questioning a paradigm or or looking for truth in that sense you would see how people just accept all these narratives and don't think for themselves. People don't want to think for themselves. And maybe we're all guided to some degree. I mean, on my YouTube channel is called Free Thinker. Free Thinker Silver. I can't be a true free thinker. That's not possible. But you can at least try to be more self-conscious about, about why you adopt certain narratives. But most people are never going to try and move in that direction and that can be very black pilling that can make you very pessimistic about the world but then you see that that's the mass of humans that's how they are and at least if you come to peace with that you can start to see things well how does power work in the world how does politics work you're basically feeding lies to people constantly or you're, you're feeding half truths that make people feel good or give them a sense of inspiration at least in in the modern age politics in the past didn't exist the way it does today with voting and stupid representative institutions it was more basic the village the clan acted on its own behalf kings were actually not supreme in the middle ages that was more a product of the enlightenment kings were kind of first among equals they had a lot of respect but the lords were very powerful as well and that, that was kind of an organic form of the use of power called peoples asserting themselves so there was none of this individualism that we have today but the point is you assert power this is the nature of politics this is why the left is winning because they understand this you can assert power cynically or you can just assert power honestly but you have to assert power so we would need to protect our kids from LGBTQ propaganda. We would need to, like I mentioned, deportations. And I'm not saying all these things are going to happen, but you need to at least entertain the possibility. Of what would a truly conservative world look like? Because it wouldn't look like anything we've known from the 60s. It would look like something from, well, I don't want to say we go back to the past, but it would look like something older at least in terms of patterns of social organization we would have segregation because peoples wouldn't be mixed together like that so the default of that is segregation what is a country other than a segregation from another group of people we would have borders which are firmly monitored the flow of people would be controlled so that the balance of the society would not be upset meaning demographically would not be upset economically would not be unduly affected by any negative forces by opening the borders this would be something extremely important to maintaining your people so the highest good would not be individualism and hedonism it would be serving the community and serving god ultimately so we would be more selfless and maybe you can call that collectivist but that is how all peoples of the world survive and we would do other things too like we wouldn't have free speech like i said we would control what information is out there we might have to shut down a lot of the internet or we might just have to shut down the internet altogether actually but then i wouldn't be able to do what what i like to do well i'll just put that outlet into something else like I would still have that creative outlet yeah there would be some technologies that would have to be limited some people say well technology itself is not evil it's like what's in the heart of the person using that that's partially true but also 
a bad heart will lead you to produce certain technology that's clearly didn't make the world a better place. Like We can say that about technology too. So a truly conservative world, it would not be a backward medieval world where we like live in pre-industrial conditions. We would still have industry. We would still have technology. We wouldn't be like the Amish. Okay, we would have cars and planes and electronics and we could invent new technology. However, certain things about technology we might just do away with like maybe smartphones maybe we might have to rethink the internet maybe we might have to rethink a lot of stuff could you ever like partially restrict the internet because something like that once it's out of the bag how could you stop that but i don't know i mean if you had a cohesive people then just the same way these amish communities don't have smartphones or other people who watch their kids can really manage to control how much time their kids actually spend looking at screens, looking at smartphones, they can have some success. I wouldn't rule it out that a cohesive people could pull something like that off either. But we're not in the stage. We need to build the cohesive people first. And that's when we get into the position about thinking of all these other uses of force that would build a more conservative society. We're not there yet. But we have to believe and think that this is the ideal, that it could be theoretically attained, and that it's something worth striving for, if history is any guide. Hasta luego, amigos.